We begin the Gemara on top of Yudbeiz Amidalef. The Gemara here is discussing the source for the halacha that it said in the Mishnah regarding what qualifies for kosher eschach. The Mishnah says two conditions. It has to be gidulim in aretz. It grows from the ground. And emekabu tumah. It does not contract any tumah. So what's the source for this? The Gemara tried a few sources and the Gemara refuted them. The Gemara here comes to a source in the name of Rabbi Yechenen. When Ravan came, he said, in the name of Rabbi Yechenen. Omakra, the Pasik says, regarding the mitzvah of Sukkah, Chaga Sukkah is Tasalcha, is the beginning of the Pasik, Shivas Yamim. And then it says, When you gather from your threshing floors and from your wine press. So what do we see from this Pasik? The Pasik is speaking about the waste that comes from the goyren, from the, uh, from the threshing floor, and yakev also the waste from the wine press. That's what the Pasuk is speaking about. So as Rashi explains, what does this mean? What's the waste? We're talking about the stalks without the grain, and we're talking about the vines without the grapes. That's what the Pasuk is referring to when it says here, this is what it should be used for schach. So the Gemara asks him this, but how do you know that? Why shouldn't I say that it doesn't refer just to the stalks or to the vines. It refers to the stalks together with the grains and it refers to the vines together with the grapes. So if so, the, the grapes themselves and the stalks and the, the grains actually, they're makabal tumma, they're foods. So therefore, I see the Torah says you could be using the schach even with the oichal, the food, which is makabal tumma. So this is not a good source for what it says in the Mishnah, that something which is Mechabal Tumah cannot be used for Shach. On Rab Zayde, so Rab Zayde says, no, you can't say that. Yekev Ksivkan. The Pasuk says, Yekev, the wine press. Vyev Sholesachich, boy, wine. If, it, if, we, if we would actually interpret wine press as, as in the wine of the wine press, wine is not something that could be used as Shach, as a covering, as a roof for the Sukkah. So obviously, when it says Yekev, it doesn't mean the actual grapes or the, the wine. What does it mean? It means the psilas, the vines of the wine press. So therefore we know that it's something that's not makabotum. Maskaf lo Rabbi Yirmiya, Rabbi Yirmiya asks in this, it's actually possible to say that Yekev refers to the wine itself. There is a scenario that wine itself could be used as chach. What is that? Ve'eme, let us say that yayin karush, congealed wine, haba misnir, which comes from Snir, which is actually, actually from Har Chermain. This is a Rashi in the end of Parshish Dvarim that we just learned, that Chermain is also called Snir. And the reason it's called Snir, incidentally, is because it's a place where there's a lot of snow, and the word Snir is connected to snow. So Bikitzer, the wine that comes from there, is a kind of wine that could be congealed. And what happens when it's congealed? And it becomes like a thick piece of, uh, like, a, like the cake that's made out of the figs that they press together. The wine becomes like a thick piece, and it could be used as a covering on the sukkah. So when the Torah writes Yekev, maybe Yekev does actually refer to the wine itself of the wine press when it's congealed in this way. So how do you know it only refers to the waste? So Amr Abzaydeh, Rabzaydeh said, Ha milse have a This idea, we had it in our hands. We, we thought we have a good source here for what it says in the Mishnah, that it can't be the grapes itself, it can't be the wine itself, it has to be only the waste. And we thought we had a good source. Vasar Rab Yirmiya, and Rab Yirmiya came with his question, Vishada be Narga, and he threw an axe into it, that now we don't have a proper source for what it says in the Mishnah. Ravashi Yama, so Ravashi says, you look in the words of the Pasuk itself, you'll see it. It says, Mi garnacha v'loi garnatzmai. You should take for the schach from the wine press, or from the, well, mi garnacha is from the, the piles that uh, you have on the threshing floor, but v'loi garnatzmai, not the actual pile itself. Mi yikvecha, from the wine press, v'loi yekevatzmai, but not from the wine itself of the wine press. So from the mem and the pasuk, I know that it only refers to the waste that comes from the wine and the waste that comes from the grains. So that's uh, how we know that it's something which is growing from the ground and it's not makabel tuma. Rav Chizda, Rav Chizda says, Mei hocha. I see it from the following pasuk. It says here, it's a pasuk in the Chemia, where the pasuk says, Suahar, go to, to the mountain. Ve'vi bring the leaves of an olive tree, the leaves of a tree that grows, uh, 
whatever that produces oil, vale hodos, and the branches from a hodos tree, from a myrtle branch, vale tomorem, and the leaves from a palm tree, vale eights aves, and the branches, and, or the leaves from an eights aves, which is also a hodas tree that's called an ovais because it's, it li- looks like it's, it's woven together, the way the leaves grow, three in one row. So here, what do we see in this Pasik? In the end of that Pasik, it says, La say sukkahs, that from this you build a sukkah. So in this Pasik, you see that you're bringing from these leaves, not from the fruit itself, not from something which is makabal tome, it's something that grows from the ground, and you're bringing from the leaves, from the branches, for the material of the schach of the sukkah. Some Rishayim actually say Rav Chista's intention is not to bring a source from this Pasuk itself because this is a Pasuk in Nehemiah. We have to have a Pasuk in Chumash to bring a source for this. It's only a support to answer the question of Rav Yirmiya that maybe Yikvecha means the wine itself. So therefore he brings you from the Pasuk in Nehemiah where you see that he was referring to the leaves and so on. So we go back to the Pasuk Basbacham Agarnacham Yikvecha and we re- interpret it over there as well that it's only referring to the ways, to the leaves, to the branches and not to the grains or the wine itself. Now incidentally the Gemara asks a question on this Pasuk and says, Hainu Hadas, Hainu Eitz Avas. This Pasuk says, go bring from the Hadas and go bring from the Eitz Avas. It's the exact same tree. Um, Rav Chiste, so what's the difference? Rav Chiste says, Hadas Shaita Lesukah, a Hadas, which is called a Hadas Shaita, literally an irregular Hadas. Rashi explains it doesn't grow the way the Hadasim grow, which are three leaves coming out of the same row. So when it grows, not in its usual manner, so that's possible for the Hadasim, for the Dal Minim, so that's used for the Sukkah. The eight Avais Lelulav, and then when it says eight Avais, when it actually grows three on one row, and it grows looking perfectly the way it's supposed to look, the, 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 the hodar of the Eitz of the Hadas, that it looks woven from the bottom to the top, that's going to be used for the Lulav. Zok te Mishneh, kash, a bundle of straw, chavile eitzim, a bundle of wood, chavile zradin, a bundle of reeds. Eim esachachem ben, you're not allowed to use it as a bundle for schach. The kulon, but however, all of these bundles, she'etidam, if he untied them, k'sheres, then it'll be kosher. So this is even if he untied it after he placed it on top of the sukkah. As we'll see in the Gemara, the Gemara will explain that the missionary is speaking about something which is only asam the Rabbanon, for exeda. So since it's only asam the Rabbanon, there's no issue of tase v'loymena osoi if you're untying it after the fact, after you placed it down onto the sukkah. The kulon, k'sheres, l'defanos. All of these bundles will be kosher to use as walls. The issue is only for the schach, but not for walls. As Rashi here reminds us again, the name sukkah is because of the schach of the sukkah. The walls could be made of any material, doesn't matter. That's not what the name sukkah comes from. And Rashi actually points out, even though we had in the Gemara before in Davav, it learned out the number of walls required for a sukkah from the terminology in the Torah, basukkah is basukkah is basukkah is teishvu. So seemingly, we are learning about the walls from the word basukais, but Ashi says, no, that's not the actual meaning of the word basukais. It's just from the extra words in the Taita, we learn out the number of walls. But the walls are not what defines the sukkah, it's only the schach. So therefore, the walls could be made of any material. Omar Rav Yaakov, so Rav Yaakov said, Shamit minei de Rav Yechenen tarti. I heard from Rav Yechenen an explanation of two halachas. Chadeha, one is this Mishnah, What's the issue with using schach, these bundles? And the idach, and then I also heard from him the explanation of another halacha, which is a chaitit begadish lasis le person that has a big pile of grain, and he dug a hole inside this pile, and now he sort of has a sukkah inside, he has the right space that's required for a sukkah inside this pile. Ain't a sukkah, that's not a sukkah. So that's the other halacha. So, he heard from Rabbi Yechen and the explanation of our Mishnah and that Mishnah. Chada, regarding one of them, he said, Mishum Gzeiras Oitzer. The issue is that Chachamim passed the Sukkah only with the Rabbanon because you shouldn't come to use an Oitzer for a Sukkah. What's an Oitzer? An Oitzer is a place that's made as a storage house. If it's a storage house, the roof, even if it has a roof like Schach, but it's not built for sure not for the purpose of the mitzvah of sukkah, but that itself is not an issue because we don't need it to be built for the purpose of sukkah. But the issue is the schach that's placed onto this oitzer is not even placed there for the, for the purpose of tzel, for shade. It's just there to create this storage place. If so, it's a puzzle of sukkah. 
Right, so therefore, Chachamim made a any materials that you use, that's usually used for an Eitzer, and therefore you could come to confuse it with an Eitzer, with a storage house, should not be used for a Sokeh. That's one explanation that Rabbi Yechenin said. Another explanation he said, Vachada, and regarding one of these two Mishnas, he said, Mishum Tasa Veloi Osi, that it's a Psalm and not a Gzayim and Rabbanam, but it's actually Psalm and because of the issue of Tasa Veloi Mena Osi, that what you did when you placed the Schach on the Sukkah, it was Psalm and Schach, and therefore later when you have the Schach there, it's just there on its own, and you did not place Kosher Schach on the Sukkah. And Rabbi Yaakov says, Veloi Yadayna, Veloi Yadayna, and I don't know, Hai Minayu Mishum Oitzer, Regarding which one of these two Mishnayas did Rabbi Yechenin say that it's only Asr because of Exerim and Rabbanon, or it's Pasal, that is, because of Exerim and Rabbanon, the Haiminayu Mishum Tasa Veleimen Asri. And which one of these two Mishnayas did Rabbi Yechenin say is actually Pasal Menatayre because of Tasa Veleimen Asri? Om Rabbi Yechenin, so Rabbi Yechenin said, Nachzi Anan, let us see. Om Rabbi Yechenin, Om Rabbi Yechenin, Rabbi Yechenin said in the name of Rabbi Yechenin himself, that explained the case of our Mishnah. Why was it said that Chavile Kash, Chavile Eitzim, Chavile Zradin, a bundle of straw, a bundle of wood, or a bundle of reeds, that you're not allowed to use it as Chach? So he explained that it's Exerim with Rabbanon. Why? Because sometimes it could happen. A person comes from the field in the evening, and he's carrying a bundle on his shoulder. And he puts it onto a sukkah, all, not for the purpose of schach, and not even for the purpose to create shade, but only he's putting it there, kedeli after, just to dry it. And then a few days later, it could be sukkahs, and the nimloch alel the sichoch. And now he changes his mind that he wants to use it for schach. And the Torah says that you can't use it for schach because tase v'leimen asi. When you placed it on the sukkah, you just placed it there to dry. It wasn't kosher as schach. And now that it's already on the sukkah and you want to just use it as is, that's also It's just made on its own. You didn't do anything. So what is Rabbi Yechelen saying? That pa'amin, because this could happen, so therefore they were geyser, that you should never use these bundles that are usually used for storage purposes. And it could happen that a person should do this. So you should never place schach, even if you're placing it for the purpose of shade and even for the purpose for the sukkah, do not use it because of this gzayra. So it's clear, Rabbi Yechenin said, that the Pshat on our Mishnah, what is it speaking about? It's speaking about these bottles that were used for the place there for the purpose of schach, but nevertheless, there's a gzayda. So now the Gemara explains, so midaha mishum gzayda says, if over here the Pshat on this Mishnah of the bundles, the reason why it's a problem is because of a gzayda mid Rabbanon, that it, a person shouldn't come to, do, to use what, he's, what he does for a storage house, which is not placed for the purpose of shade. So ha, the other Mishnah, where it speaks about digging a hole inside a pile of grain and creating a hole and a sukkah inside there, there the issue is you never did an action to place any schach. You just made a hole and it was all there on its own. That's the issue over there. Very clear. So we know what Rabbi Yechinan explained these two Mishnahs. Now the Gemara says, Rabbi Yaakov, Rabbi Yaakov that had a doubt about, he didn't know, he said, so he didn't hear this statement that Rabbi Baba heard in the name of Rabbi Yechinan, so therefore he had a suffolk about this. But now, however, Ravashi asks on this. Now, this case of Chavile Kash Chavile Eitzim, the case of the bundles, Mishum Gzeiras Eitzim Ike, the only time it could be possible is because of a psalm of the Rabbanon. You put it for the right reason, but there's a gzayda because it could be common to put it for the wrong reason, to just put it there for a storage, and the psal is only with the Rabbanon. That's the only scenario, that's the only way we could explain this case of the bundles. Mishum ta'asav aleimena asli leke. And a case where there actually is a psal menatayda of ta'asav aleimena asli, that's not applicable over here. In other words, if it's actually a case where he put the bundles on the sukkah for the purpose of just drying it, and then he leaves it there and he wants the nimlach, he wants to use it later for the sukkah, then the issue is a psal menatayda, tasav aleimena asli. So this case of the bundles, it could be either or. If you put it for, for bundle, if you put the bundles there to dry, so then there's a psal menatayda. If you put them there for the purpose of the sukkah, so then it would only be a gzayda midrabanan. 
So why are we saying that this Mishnah, Chavile Kash, Chavile Eitzim, is talking about only a Psalm of the Rabbanon? And the same thing regarding the other case. the Godish, the case of a person that makes a hole inside a pile of wheat or grain. Is that a case that it's only applicable a psul menatayre where he did nothing to build any sukkah to place schach and therefore there's a psul menatayre that the sukkah just becomes on its own, so to speak. Mishum gzeira soitzer leke. And there's no scenario where that could be interpreted as only a psul medrabonon. So as Rashi explains, what happens if a person comes to a pile of grain and he doesn't only make a hole, but he actually also moves the top of the grain. As we said before, it shouldn't be tas of lemon also, you have to be minaneya. So he moves the top, then he should do an action for it to be a kosher sukkah. So then minatayda would be a kosher sukkah. The issue would only be midrabbanan. That is pretty, in order for a person not to come to use this without doing that action, chachamu geyser, that it should be possible always to make a sukkah inside this pile. So how do we know not to interpret that Mishnah that it's speaking about Absol Midrabanam. So the Gemara says, Rabbi Yechenen, Amalach, Rabbi Yechenen will answer you. It, look at the language that's used in this Mishnah and in that Mishnah. Ha, tani, here in our Mishnah it says, Ein Mesachachin Behen. You do not use this for Schach. Lechatchilohu, the Ein Mesachachin. So that language, Ein Mesachachin, is implying that Lechatchila, if one comes to ask the question, we tell him, don't do so, there's Exeirim et Rabbanam. Mishum Exeiras Eitzer, it's only Exeirim et Rabbanam that, even though you're doing it right, but because you're using materials, a bundle, in a way that people usually just place there to, to store or to dry, so don't use this. Ha Deiraise, Shapir Dami, but Minat Teire, it's okay. So that's the language of Ein Mesachachin. Ein Mesachachin is mashma only a Iser mit Rabbanon. There's actually Machleikas Rishayinam, how to learn Pshat in this Gemara. Taisa speaks about it. Is the Gemara to be learned that Ein Mesachachin indicates that it's only a Gzeri mit Rabbanon and not a Psol mit It's one way how to learn the Gemara. Even though the Gemara uses the term Lechatchila, the Gemara doesn't mean Lechatchila as, as opposed to Bidiyevet. That after the fact, it's okay. No, even after the fact, mit Rabbanon, it's still possible. But the term Ein Mesachachin shows us that it's exerted that Chachamim are now coming and telling you, don't do it this way. Others say, no, that the Pshat in the Gemara here is, A, that the whole Gzeri Mid Rabbanon, not to use these bundles, not only is it a Gzeri Mid Rabbanon, but even Mid Rabbanon, it's only a Psol Lechat Chile. If you come to ask, we tell you not to do so. But after the fact, even Mid Rabbanon, it would be usable. Now the Gemara goes to the other Mishnah. What did it say there regarding a person that makes the hole inside the pile of wheat or the pile of grain? Hasam, <clears throat> Diktani over there, it says, Eino sukkah. That if you make a sukkah inside the goiren, it's not a sukkah. So over there it means, Afilad yevet, midday raise, nami eino sukkah. Even after the fact, it's not a sukkah, it's a psol min ha taira. So therefore we know that that Mishnah is talking about a case where he made a hole and he didn't do anything else. He didn't move the schach on the top. So therefore, there's an issue in Atayra of Tasev Eloi Menasi. The Gemara continues with other halachas pertaining to what qualifies as schach of the sukkah. Amar Av Yudam Arav, Sichecha Bechitzen Zecharim. So when you have the uh, arrows, <coughs> so an arrow has a handle, a wooden handle. That wooden handle could be made in two ways. Either you have a handle, that a wooden handle that comes sort of to a tip, uh, to, a, to a point that is, and that point of the wooden handle is stuck into the metal of the arrow. That's what's called chitzim zcharim. Then you have these handles that, are not, that, that do not stick into the metal in that way. It doesn't come to a point and go into the uh, metal of the arrow. Rather, this wooden handle has a hole in it and you stick the metal part of the arrow into the hole of this wooden handle. So the Gemara explains, If you used for schach those arrows, the handles of those arrows, that are schachim, that come, that are just like a tip, then kshayra, then it's kosher. Ben if you use the ones that are nekevais, which means the, the wooden handles that have holes in it, and you place the arrow into it, then psula, then it would be possible. So what's the reason for this difference? So the difference is very simple, because the, we can't use anything that's makabal tumah as chach for a sukkah. So if it's something which has a hole in it, that's a kli kibble. It's a receptacle. So therefore it's makabal tumah. can't be used as chach. But if it doesn't have that hole, it's just this wooden piece, a plain wooden piece, and it has sort of a tip, and it goes into the, 
into the metal, so then it's pshuta kliyat, it's not makabal tumma, there's no issue. So the Gemara asks the question, what did we say? Schadim kshayra, using the ones that are schadim is, is kosher, it's not makabal tumma, pshita, it's obvious, you, you could see it, it's, it's just a plain piece of wood. What's the chiddush of this? So the answer is, Ma'o the Taima, I would think, Nigzer Zacharim Otto Nekevis. Because these are two different kinds of handles for the same thing, for an arrow, so it's very easy to confuse one with another. Maybe there should be a that you shouldn't use any handles of arrows. So Kamash Malon, that was the Chiddush that Rav Yudah Marav said that you could use the ones that are Zacharim. Same question is in the reverse, but Nekeva is Psula, the ones that are Nekeva that have a hole in it. Our Apostle, Pshit, it's also obvious. It's, it's Makabal, so it's Makabal Tome. So the answer is, I would think to say, When you have this hole that's designed in order to place the arrow inside of it, and once you put the arrow inside, it's made to stay there. It's not made to be like a keli that's always made to receive something into it. It's just made to put in, put in and stay there. So I would think in such a case, it's not a kibble. It's not something which is makabal tome. Kamash malan, that's why he's teaching you that this is makabal tome and you should not use it as chach. If someone uses Fischach and Nitze Pishton, this is the flax that all the entire process of preparing this to be able to be used as, as material is all done already. That's Anitze Pishton. So, as we'll see here in the Gemara, there are different stages of taking this stalk of flax and then turning it into the um, into the linen that you use to make out of it a garment. So you have to take off this flax and then you have to Soak it in water, and then you have to dry it, and then you have to pound it in order to take off the shells and different parts of it. And after that, you have to comb it. And after they comb it, they put it into the oven to cook it in order for it to become white. Those are the different stages. So Anitze Pishton refers to this flax when the entire process is done. So Psula, this is possible, because at that point, it's Makabal Tumah. It's something that uh, could be makabal tome, as Rashi brings, by a nega. So therefore, you can't use it for the socket. The hutzne pishton. Hutzne pishton is the flax on the stalk, right fresh when it comes out from the ground, and it's not in any way prepared to be used. Kshayra. So that's kosher. That's exactly what tzchach is, growing from the ground, and it's not prepared. It's not makabal tome. The hushne pishton. The hushne pishton. So this is the flax that's in the middle of the process. It's not just raw as it grew, it's not completely done either, it's in the middle of the process. So any day I'm out. So Rabbi Yechanan said, I don't know what the halacha would be with this. For hushne atzman, any idea. this hushni itself, this uh, which is uh, in between, in the, in the process. So any idea, I don't know, ma nafshach. Well, what was, what was the kavana? This is Rabbi speaking here. Rabbi Barbachon is saying this Hushni that Rabbi Yechanan said that he doesn't know what the Allah is because it's like in between. So I don't know exactly what level of the process in between from when it's growing to when it's completely done. What was he talking about? E Dayik Veloy Nofitz. Is he speaking about this flax once it was already pounded? In other words, it was already soaked in the water, it was pounded also. And, but Veloy Nofitz, the only thing that it's still missing is it wasn't combed yet. Or it wasn't combed and then whitened. That hushni karile. So that's what's called hushni, that it's in the middle of the process. And over here, it's a suffix if it could be used for schach. Avul tari daik. If it was only soaked in the water and it wasn't even pounded yet, hutsni karile. That's still called hutsni, which is like the, the flax and the stalks, which for sure is kosher to be used for the schach. That's one way to interpret what hushni means. That, that's part of the process. Or maybe, no, Tari Veloidaik Nami, even if you just soaked it, just soaking it, the first part of the process, even though you didn't pound it yet. So Nami Hushni Karile, it's also called Hushni, you already began the process, and regarding that, it could be a problem, and it maybe it can't be used for Schach anymore. So the Gemara doesn't answer this. The Gemara goes on to another Allah, Omer Rav Yudah said, Hani Shushi Shvatsri. These are various kinds of vegetables that uh, grow and have big leaves and they can be used for schach. You can use them both for schach. Abayom Abayi says, B'shushi, M'sachachim, with the shushi, you, you could use for schach. B'shvatsri, loy M'sachachim. But shvatsri, you cannot use it for schach. My time, what's the reason? Kivin the sari, since, again, kivin the sari rechayu, because it has 
a not good aroma. So if you use it for schach, what's going to happen is shavik lov and nafik. A person's going to leave the sukkah and he's not going to sit in the sukkah. So therefore, you're not allowed to use this as schach, which is going to cause the person to leave the sukkah. And the Ritva actually says there that if this is the reason, so that it's not a, a, a psal, particularly in schach. It's a psal to use this for any part of the sukkah, including for the walls as well. You're not allowed to build the sukkah in such a way that it'll cause a person to leave the sukkah. And this is brought also in the Ramah and Shulchan Aruch. Amr Rav Chanan Barover, Rav Chanan Barover said, Hani hizmi vihigi, various type of thorn bushes or thorn branches. Mesachich bo, it could be used as schach. Abaya Amr Abaya said, Behizmi mesachichinon. With hizmi, you could use as schach. Behigi, a different type of thorn bush. Loi mesachichin, you cannot mesachichinon, you cannot use it as a schach. My timer, what's the reason? Even the Nasri Tarfayu, because its leaves keep on falling down, or the branches and twigs of it keep on falling down into the sukkah, so Shavik Levanofik, the person is going to leave the sukkah, like we said before, you can't make a sukkah of something that a person is going to leave the sukkah because of this. So therefore, it's possible. And that's even if it's, the leaves are going to fall and it's still going to be Tzilasa Merubim Mechamasa, it doesn't matter. But over here, because it's falling, so therefore, this is not going to be a good, a good sukkah. So obviously, the Ritva over here says this is only regarding schach, because the issue is not the bad aroma, but the issue is the fact that it's false, so it's only an issue with schach, but it's not an issue with the walls of the sukkah.